Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In one of my previous videos, I showed you all how if you're in a home rental or an apartment, how you can use a Wi-Fi adapter like the TP-Link wireless extender to go from Wi-Fi 6 to a hardwired connection and to get near hardwired speeds, latency, and connection quality. Today I'm going to take it a step further since I need a little bit better speeds and a little bit better quality here in my office area to transfer archived video footage to my NAS in the other room. The NAS is right by our Xfinity modem, but the Xfinity modem supports something called Mocha. So what we're gonna do today is take this guy, which is a USB to 2.5 gigabit adapter and pair it with this Mocha adapter that I got off of eBay. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this should be pretty straightforward as well. This guy is just a regular USB-C connection. I'm gonna go from there into the laptop and then of course you have 2.5 gig ethernet on one end and then on our NAS, we added a 2.5 gig ethernet card a while back. So pretty straightforward, not really an unboxing that's needed. We're gonna take this guy and put it in the MacBook. And then we're gonna take this Mocha adapter. Look at that, it's still brand new in the packaging. And we're gonna plug this into our splitter. And we'll show you that here in a second. Power and ethernet. The cool thing about Mocha adapters, especially with most internet service providers that have coax, is that you only need one. You can use two of these to get a connection somewhere else in the house if you don't have ethernet there, but you do have coax. But in our case, we're gonna go straight out of the modem into this guy. So let's get set up in the other room so we can show you that. All right, so here's where our internet comes out of the house over coax. And admittedly, this is my first time opening it since Xfinity came out to install it. And of course it's a jumbled mess, but we'll clean that up here in a little bit. This is what we're looking for. They put a splitter, well, they put a coupler in to get the internet from outside to our modem on the other end. So what we're gonna do is take this splitter, make sure it's bi-directional, put it in place here, have one going in, one going out, and then we're gonna run coax to the other room just to make it a little bit cleaner and easier to deal with so we don't have to terminate ends. We can get the right length a lot easier than you know having to do the whole patch down process. Also, just to show you guys this Mocha adapter. We could put the Mocha adapter in here, but putting it in another room will give us a little bit of ease with seeing what's going on as far as the status lights, etc. One other thing to be mindful with this specific adapter is here on the front. You have a switch selector. There's a one gigawatt, a LAN, and a 25 gigawatt. There's a couple of different settings here. The reason those are on there is because you have different frequencies that this guy can work over. Okay, so for those of you who are already familiar with how to terminate an end on an RG6 coax cable, you can skip ahead about two minutes. For everyone else, what we have here is 18 gauge, 100 foot, RG6 coax cable bundle that I picked up from Lowe's. We also have a coax and ethernet wire stripper as well as a compression fit compression tool for the end that's gonna terminate onto the wire. So we're just gonna go ahead and peel back the exposed end and take this little protective cap off. And we're gonna use the wire stripper here and we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have our fitting in for RG6 and RG59 and it actually has a little slit in the razor piece that actually is perfectly set to where you can strip the wire and strip the rubber piece off 
and expose the shielding as well as the copper on the end. So you just push this down on the end like so and you run it around the wire a couple of times and then just pull it forward. And that's it. So now our wire is perfectly stripped. We're going to go ahead and take a compression fitting and we're going to go ahead and slide it on the end like so and just push it down all the way as far as you can and give it a little bit of a twist. Then we're going to go ahead and take our compression crimper here and slide the copper bit into the little nipple inside of the compression tool. And you're just going to push down as hard as you can. And you can kind of see the little black part in between the two silver parts compressed. Give it a little tug. Just make sure it's on there tight. And you should be good to go and ready to connect this to our splitter now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open our media panel here and just take a look at how we've cleaned things up. We used a bit of Velcro and made a couple of loops. And then we just went ahead and put the splitter in here and attached it to the panel. And that's it. So now we're going to go ahead and do a, a quick time lapse of me just setting up these cable hiders. Uh, they have an adhesive background. These can be found on Amazon or most other places pretty easily. The set on Amazon was just cheaper by volume. So that's why I went with that set. You slide it over the wire, snap it together, clip it into place, and then press down on it. This will set the glue. All right, so now we're gonna do four separate land speed tests. This is gonna be a little bit different from a WAN speed test because we're not gonna be reaching out to the internet. We just wanna see what our internal traffic looks like across four different types of network connectivity. We're of course gonna plug into our TP link that we used in the previous video, just to see what those speeds look like hardwired through the TP link across Wi-Fi 6 with a line of sight connection back to the modem. We're also going to plug directly into the modem to see what our speeds look like there. And then we're gonna use the Mocha adapter, of course, going through the Mocha cable back to the modem. And then we're also gonna do a test over Wi-Fi 6 just to see what the optimal connection speeds and transfer speeds are. So with that being said, we can't truly give you an accurate speed test per se. The thing we're gonna be testing though is to see how fast we can transfer files. That is my biggest concern. How fast can I move data from my laptop to my NAS? And is it a viable option for editing off of? we start the speed test I just wanted to log into my Xfinity modem just to show you guys where the mocha settings were and what it looks like whenever your mocha adapter is actually not connected if you look in the top right hand corner up here you see there's an X by mocha it shows unconnected and no devices so you're gonna have to go into the settings of your modem slash router and find the mocha settings Go back here real quick. So at the bottom as well under home network, you see it's not connected. We're going to go up here to connections and here you see the Mocha tab. You're going to click on that. And once you open it, you'll see this menu and it actually shows enabled, which is a good reason why I did this was to show you guys the channel settings and a couple of the other settings in this menu. So even though Mocha is enabled, the actual problem goes back to what I showed you guys earlier, where there's actually a toggle switch on your Mocha adapter. You need to make sure that the channel frequency matches whatever your Comcast or other coax modem is capable of producing. So once you have those matching, you should see a green check by the Mocha adapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and log out of the modem log back in and show you guys now that I've toggled that switch it shows connected properly and we are ready to begin our test okay so now we're ready for our baseline testing so for the first test and the subsequent test we're gonna take this 1.69 gig file and move it into the speed test folder that corresponds to the speed test we're performing so for the first one we're gonna take the hardwired Tomoka adapter test basically this is with the USB-C cable connected to the MacBook and then the Mocha adapter connected to that via Ethernet. 
And again, there's going to be a margin of error here because I am human and I just wanted to have this stopwatch on the laptop showing to kind of give you guys as close as I can with, you know, a moderate margin of error of what those speeds will look like. So for the Mocha adapter, it looks like we're going to come in at about 23.9 slash 24 seconds. So anywhere from 22 to 24 seconds for the Mocha adapter over hardwire connection. So next up, we have our hardwire to TP-Link extender. So this is with the TP-Link extender with line of sight to our Xfinity modem with a ethernet cable going into the side of the TP-Link extender. So it's basically wireless to wired hardwire connection. And I showed this uh, set up in the previous video. So again, this one is the most prone to error since there is you know, issues like line of sight and there could be RF or wireless interference over any radio frequencies. So that's why I don't feel that this is the most stable of connections, but it can provide bursts. Fun fact though, when I first moved into this rental and set this up, this is what I was using to game over and I had pretty decent results. I'm not going to say it's critical because I'm not a pro gamer, but I mean, I didn't notice as a casual gamer much lag or interference as to my capabilities as a gamer. And this one came in at about 42 seconds. So plus or minus a second there. So next up, we're going to go ahead and do Wi-Fi 6 from the laptop to the modem. And this is in very close proximity to the modem with the laptop. So this is all wireless over Wi-Fi 6. And with each of these tests, I'm actually deleting the file in the folder just in case there is any type of caching that may be happening in the background that we don't see and starting fresh with a new folder each time. So this connection looks like it may be a little bit faster. Well, obviously faster than the TP link, but it's going to come in around the same, if not slower than the Mocha adapter. Yep. And then last but not least, we're going to do the one gig hardwired into the modem, which I anticipate without any devices down the chain, this will probably be the fastest, even though it's not as fast of a connection. And we can see this thing is blazing, which it should. And it looks like we are going to come in under 20 seconds. Yep. 15.8 plus or minus a second or two to start and stop the, the clock. Okay. So now that all of the tests are out of the way, what have we learned? Well, there's a couple of interesting facts about the four data transfer speed tests we did that may explain some of the results. I know some of you are thinking, okay, a one gig connection is slower than a 2.5 gig connection. Why were those speeds faster? Well, we were connected directly to the modem. So latency was a lot less of an issue and we had zero bottleneck on the server side with it having a faster connection to the modem. Number two, even though our Mocha adapter supports 2.5, the modem itself only supports 2.0 across the Mocha adapter, across the network. So we lose a little bit of speed there. Number three, anytime you're going into another device that's in between you and the destination, you may have a little bit of latency or some speed degradation there. So I think we're experiencing that too. Being within 10 seconds on a file transfer, however, I think it's pretty impressive and speaks to why we did this in the first place. Now to address some of the other questions you guys may have. If you can run Mocha across the house, why not run Ethernet? Well, like I mentioned, over that distance, we may see some speed degradation. Also, the location of the modem is quite different from where I ran the Mocha adapter. Going from our laundry room, where our home DMARC is basically coming in, was a lot easier run, and that may be the case for others in an apartment or renting a home. That was the main reason I did it. We can't run a new 
ethernet connection through the walls. I probably could with my landlord, but most of you guys won't be able to. Even though this is surface mounted, we did it in a way that was a little bit cleaner, uh, you know, using the cord hiders. And it's something that just about anybody can do. It's not, it doesn't require a lot of technical expertise. And depending upon the run, it may be a lot more convenient. Some of you may even be in a room that already has coax to it. So that's another benefit. You don't have to run new cables if cables exist. Again, all of these reasons are the main reason why I wanted to run this Mocha adapter, just to see what the performance looks like. Also, it gave me the benefit of now being able to store and edit video directly off my NAS, which is connected right below my modem. So that's a great benefit. No more swapping SSDs. That also helps me get videos out faster. There's intrinsic benefits all around. So again, this may not be the video for everyone. It may not fit everyone's taste or setup, but again, that's why we did what we did with the Wi-Fi extender. Those speeds were pretty, pretty close. Again, about 10 to 15 seconds per gig is okay, but it just wasn't reliable enough for me to edit off of. Of course, the latency and lag does fluctuate, especially with other devices on the network, which is the main reason I wanted to use this Mocha as a dedicated stream outside of the wireless spectrum. Okay, so a bit of quick housekeeping. The Mocha adapter I got was actually a Frontier Mocha adapter. These are regularly found on eBay and Amazon. I got mine off of eBay just because it was a little bit cheaper. You guys saw the condition it came in. It was pretty much brand new. Uh, a two pack of these usually runs anywhere from 40 to 100 or so bucks if you're getting them from Amazon brand new. I elected to get it off of eBay just because most people give these things away, as you can see, because they don't need them. And then as far as what I use for cable management, I picked those up off of Amazon. And I want to say when I got them new, they were about 24, 25 bucks a set. I ended up needing two sets just to go around all of the doorways. If you have some straight shots or have other ways you can hide it, like under a rug or something like that, you might not need as long of a run, but just to make it look nice and keep the cables out of the way and not visible, I elected to go with these guys. And then I just took my Mocha adapter and I put it under my desk, tucked away. That way I'd have quick access to the cable and everything else in case I needed to reset the device. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this video. As always, I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell so you get notifications anytime I post new content. I will see you guys on the next one. Later.